This program is brought to you by Guruji TV. This YouTube video is a translation of the Tamil video of a renowned astrologer, Jyotish Mahaguru Aditya Guruji. The link of the original version that is the Tamil video is given in the description box of this video. I have so far explained about the effects of the planets in the house of Aries and the effects of the planets in the house of Taurus and the favorable planet positions and the favorable major planetary periods for both. Let us now discuss about the effects of the planets in the house of Gemini that is Mithun. Let me first of all begin to explain the general characteristics of the Gemini sign. Whatever we discuss now will apply for both Rashi and Ascendant. Rashi is used to make general predictions and for a complete prediction we have to mix and match a lot of concepts. For example, a series of steps such as assessing the general characteristics of Gemini, also assessing the Gemini as third house of the natural zodiac that is Kala Purusha and assessing the effect of moon in this house and assessing the effects of the ascendant in this house and assessing the effects of the planets in the house of Gemini. I often say that we have to mix and mash the concepts to make complete prediction. Having said this, we are going to discuss the effects of the planets in the house of Gemini that is Mithun. Gemini is the third house of the natural zodiac. This is the house that indicates intelligence. This also indicates the duality of the mind and the flexibility of the mind. The natives of Gemini ascendant will think intellectually if the Lord of Gemini, that is the planet of Mercury, is strong. The house that signifies intelligence is Virgo, that is Kanya, and the sign that signifies knowledge is Gemini or Mithun. Intelligence is different from knowledge. Gemini is the reason if someone is wise without having learnt anything. Not all the people who are educated or knowledgeable. I have come across the news that a student who had got first rank in his final examination of the state did not know even how to fill an application for undergraduation. There are also some students in contrast to have more knowledge that is the kid would have been just studying 8th grade but they will have the capability to interpret and fill in an application form. There are many educated people who fumble to fill a demand draft or check leaf when they go to a bank. Of course, they are educated, but they don't have practical knowledge. But there are many people who does not go for formal education, but are filled with a lot of practical knowledge. So there is a huge difference between intelligence and knowledge. Having said all the above, the house of Gemini delivers knowledge that is gained through the experience of life. The sign that delivers the learning capability is the sign of Virgo or Kanya. The house of Gemini is a dual sign. Among the three major categories of the signs, which are movable signs, fixed signs and dual signs, that is Chara Rashi, Thira Rashi and Upaya Rashi, Gemini is the dual sign and this is a male sign. Gemini is the male sign of planet Mercury, which is known as neither male nor female. 
I hope you know every sign in the natural zodiac is classified either as male or female. And Gemini is classified as male sign. This is an odd sign. The Gemini sign has three stars, Mrigashircha, Adra and Punarvasu. In Tamil we say Mrigasirisham, Thiruvadirai and Punarpusam. The house of Gemini has third pada and fourth pada of Mrigashircha. The half of the Mrigashircha nakshatra is in Taurus and the other half is in Gemini. The house of Gemini has also the first pada, second pada, third pada and fourth pada of Ardra and 75% of Punarvasu nakshatra such as first pada, second pada and third pada of Punarvasu. The remaining one pada of Punarvasu is in Cancer. There are three stars in this sign. The fourth pada of Punarvasu is not present in Gemini. So, in total, the house of Gemini has nine padas of the stars. This sign represents the duality of the mind. The pictorial representation of the Gemini sign is the figure of twin kids. Those were born as the native of Gemini ascendant or Gemini Rashi will reflect the character of the Gemini, that is, they will reflect the duality of mind. They are flexible according to the situation. They earn their livelihood and bred by their knowledge. The most significant character of Gemini is that the native of Gemini ascendant will be passionate to learn everything and consequently most of them will be master of none and jack of all trades. However, the intelligence of the native of Gemini ascendant will vary according to the strength of the mercury. The natives of Gemini ascendant will possess little knowledge in all the domains but might not have profound knowledge in at least one field. So, the native of the Gemini ascendant will not have in-depth knowledge in any field but they will touch all the fields. During the school age or college age or during their working age, these natives will have such an intelligence that others will envy. As per the Subhatwa level of the ascendant, there will be intelligence and others will envy their intelligence. Among the five elements of the nature, that is Panchabhuta Tattva, this sign is an Aries sign. The natural zodiac signs are classified as fiery signs, earthy signs, airy signs and watery signs. Among these four categories, Gemini is classified as airy sign. If the Gemini house is Subhatwa, then the native will have professions related to one of the elements of the nature, that is the air. When the Bhava and the planets of Gemini house are Subhatwa, then the native will choose the profession related to air. You might have noticed in my earlier videos that I used to say, for Aquarius Ascendant, when Saturn and the house of Aquarius or Subhatwa, then the native will study aeronautical engineering. The house of airy element relates to those working in airports or any professions related to flights or any profession related to air that can even include a water wash, which is based on the pressure of the air and the water, the shops of tire for repairing the tire punctures of the vehicle or profession related to the wind like windmill etc. When the house and the house lord or Subhatwa, then the native chooses the profession 
related to the above. There are three airy signs such as Gemini, Libra and Aquarius that is Mithun, Tula and Kumbh. Gemini is a combination of dual and airy sign. Libra is a combination of movable and airy sign. Aquarius is the combination of fixed and airy sign. All the three signs represent the air element of the nature. When the house and the house lord and the related Karaga planets or Subhatwa, then the native's profession will be related to the air or wind. The native will earn the bread based on the element air, for example flights where the medium of flying is air. Having said all the above, the native will do the professions related to the air element. Among the three categories of the sign, such as mobile signs, fixed signs and dual signs, Gemini is a dual sign. Based on Panjabuddha Tattva, that is based on the elements of the nature, the Gemini sign is classified as airy sign. And the Gemini sign is male sign. The nature of Gemini sign is duality of the mind. The domain that is related to knowledge is a significant aspect of the Gemini. Even though the native is not educated, the native will be knowledgeable. The native will have practical knowledge based on the life experience. The native of Gemini Ascendant will have excellent communication skill that is proportional to the strength of the planet Mercury. When Mercury is strong in the natal chart, they will work in the fields where they can apply their knowledge. The profession that demands knowledge and skill sets will be the areas that the natives of Gemini Ascendant will work. The native's profession will be in such a way that he or she will apply the skill that was learnt. This will apply for both Gemini Ascendant and Gemini Rashi. The house will reflect the significance of the Mercury as well. The professions also include the field of software, accountancy, calculations, etc. The natives of the Gemini Ascendants will be highly educated. These are the people who does, who does postdoctoral research. The native will obtain postgraduate degree or master degree like MA, MPhil, etc. I am explaining all the above professions based on the significance of the Mercury and the Subhatwa of the house. I have done research of many natal charts and I am sharing my experience with you. The combination of Gemini and Mercury will let the native to be more knowledgeable and get professions that utilizes or that demands knowledge. The native will gain dignity through the knowledge obtained. I would like to tell you one important point about dual signs. Only the dual signs will suffer from Kendradipati Dosha. There are four dual signs in the natural zodiac and they suffer from Kendradipati Dosha. And the four dual signs are Virgo, Gemini, Sagittarius and Pisces. That is Kanya, Mithun, Danush and Meen. The house lord of these four houses such as Mercury and Jupiter will suffer from Kendradipati Dosha. Let us understand the meaning of the word Kendradipati Dosha. The term Kendradipati means the Lord of Kendra house and Dosha here means an obstruction of the house effects. The Kendradipati Dosha is nothing but only the house effect will be affected if a Kendra Lord owning one or more Kendra 
is residing in its own Kendra house. Remember, Kendra Dipati Dosha will not affect the significance of the planet. So, when the house of Gemini becomes the 4th house or 7th house or the 10th house to the ascendant and has planet Mercury, Mercury will be in a state to affect the house effects. But significance of Mercury won't be affected. This is one of the intricate details that I wanted to share regarding the third house of the natural zodiac which is the dual sign. Well, when we want to assess the Gemini house, this represents the duality of the mind. The pictorial representation is twin kids. The natives of Gemini ascendant are knowledgeable. More than what they learn by education, they will learn by their experiences and are practically very knowledgeable. Due to excessive curiosity, to learn many things in the world, these people will not have profound knowledge in all the domains. They learn but they will have superficial knowledge in all the domains and they will gain benefits through those learned knowledge. This applies both for the natives of Gemini Ascendant and Gemini Rashi. The level of the knowledge depends on the Subhatva of the planet Mercury. The knowledge of the native is directly proportional to the strength of the Mercury in their natal chart. Please try to understand all these points. This is an airy sign. The native will choose the profession in such a way that it is related to the natural element air provided the house is Subhatva. These are the general predictions for the house of Gemini. Please try to make predictions based on which ascendant you are and which house Gemini is to your ascendant. I have published many premium subscription videos regarding the house effects of all the signs to an ascendant. And now I explain the effects of the planets in the house of Gemini. You have to combine all these to render a final prediction. Now let us see which planets will act favorable when it is in the house of Gemini. Let me first explain about the planet Sun. When Sun is positioned in the house of Gemini, the house is not friendly house but it is in the house of Mercury that treats the sun as its friend. This Gemini house is dual nature for the sun. Remember this is not friendly house for the sun itself because it does not consider Mercury as friend. I repeat this is not the friendly house for the sun. Yet, it will maintain some duality. The lord of the house of Gemini is a planet that treats sun as its friend, whereas the sun does not treat the Gemini house lord Mercury neither as its friend nor as its enemy. It is like a neutral state. Imagine the situation where you treat a person as your best friend, yet that person does not treat you as a friend and tends to address you as some acquaintance of good nature and nothing more. What can we conclude from this? This is not a sign of good friendship. This difference in understanding is present between the Sun and the Mercury. However, since Mercury as the house lord of Gemini treats the Sun as a best friend when sun is in the house of Gemini, it will reflect the duality of the mind. The sun will be happy since the house lord of the Gemini treats the sun as a best friend. And when the sun is positioned in the house of Gemini, it signifies that a native is born in the month of Arni, 
that is jeshta those who are born in the month of ani that is jeshta will have the sun in the house of gemini if the planet sun in the house of gemini is not in conjunction with malefic planets like saturn or rahu in addition if it is in conjunction with jupiter or venus or if it is aspected by benefic planets such as jupiter or by full moon or venus sun becomes more subhatva and it will deliver great benefits the house of gemini is the third house in the natural zodiac or kala purusha in general when the sun is in the third house or sixth house or tenth house or eleventh house with subhatva and being strong it will deliver the complete house effects of the house where it resides having said the above when the sun is strong and got subhatva in the third house of the natural zodiac that is gemini it will incline the native to work in the fields related to intelligence during the major planetary period of the sun therefore when the sun is in the house of gemini which is the third house of the natural zodiac it is good to a certain extent it will not deliver bad effects but there are certain conditions to be met where sun does not deliver bad effects the sun must be subhatva without the connection of malefics like saturn or rahu there is one more point i would like to add here even if there is a conjunction of sun and its friendly planet moon in the house of gemini and the moon is amavasya sun will be in a status not to deliver bad effects to a certain extent having said all the above for those who are born in the month of ani or jeshta the sun will reside in the house of gemini in the natal chart which will not deliver unfavorable effects to the native if you contemplate the reason behind the said logic you will definitely understand the concept because there are three stars where the sun can reside when it is in the house of gemini the sun can reside in mrigashirsha or mrigasirisham ardra or tiruvadirai punarvasu or punarposam except the star ardra whose planet lord is rahu when the sun is present in the other stars such as mrigashirsha or punarvasu whose planet lords or mars and jupiter respectively there will be more benefits please listen carefully now i'm going to share a very important point to you in order to make a prediction if a planet is in the house of gemini that resides in the star mrigashirsha whose star lord is mars that is nakshatra lord is mars you will try to assess the strength of the mars and you will also check for which houses to the ascendant mars is the lord you also know how to predict the effect of a planet if the sun is present in the star punarvasu whose star or nakshatra lord is jupiter but many of you will have doubts how to predict the effects of the planet if it resides in the star of ardra whose star lord is rahu i have already explained how to make predictions in such cases in my previous videos please remember the following points if a planet resides in a star whose star lord or nakshatra lord is rahu then the planet will not deliver good defects you have to check in which house rahu is residing in the natal chart and check the lord of the house 
where Rahu resides. Identify the houses owned by the house lord of Rahu. Let us take an example. There is a planet residing in the house of Gemini and let it be any planet. If the planet resides in the star of Adra, whose nakshatra lord is Rahu, if Rahu is in connection with Jupiter or Venus and resides in the house of a natural benefic, then the planet will not lose its own light by the connection of Adra nakshatra. This is the way you have to predict when a planet resides in the stars like Adra, Swati and Shatabisha that is Thiruvadirai, Swati and Sadayam whose nakshatra lord is Rahu. Rahu must be in the house of a natural benefic such as Jupiter or Venus. Rahu must be in connection with Jupiter or Venus or it must be aspected by natural benefic like Jupiter or Venus. In these cases, the planet that resides in the star of Ardra will not lose its light. Now, let us see how to predict the effect of the planet that resides in a star whose nakshatra lord is Rahu. I am going to explain what would be the effects of a planet if it resides in a star whose nakshatra lord is Rahu. Identify in which house Rahu resides and find the house lord of the Rahu. You have to consider the planet which resides in the star of Ardra actually resides in the nakshatra of the house lord of Rahu. Generally, Rahu will incline to behave like the lord of the house in which it resides. During the major planetary period of the planet that resides in Rahu nakshatra, Rahu will behave like the lord of the house where it resides and deliver the house effects as same as house lord for the planet which is on Rahu nakshatra. Having said the above, if there is any planet that resides in the star of Ardra and if Rahu is Subhatva, then the planet will deliver good effects. If Rahu is Pabhatva, that is, if Rahu is in conjunction with Saturn, then the planet which resides in the star of Ardra will not do benefits, rather it will do bad effects since the planet loses its light owing to Pabhatva of Rahu. Let us imagine that the sun resides in the star of Ardra and Rahu is in conjunction with Saturn in the house of Leo. It is such a great harm to the father of the native during the major planetary period of the sun that is Dasha of the sun. If the ninth bhava to the ascendant is strong, then the father will remain alive. Let us say, the sun resides in the star of Ardra and let us imagine that Rahu is in conjunction with a malefic like Saturn or in conjunction with Mars and also resides in the house of a malefic. Rahu is highly malefic then and all the positive effects of the planet that resides in the star of Ardra will be spoiled during the major planetary period of the sun. I have written two to three articles regarding the effects of Rahu and Ketu. The article was titled as the effects of Rahu and Ketu that resides in its own stars. That is the effects of Rahu that resides in its own stars Adra, Swati and Shatabisha that is Thiruvadirai, Swati and Sadayam and the effects of Ketu that resides in Ashwini, Maga and Mola that is Ashwini, Magam and Molam. I wrote another article which is titled as 
the effects of the planet whose star lord is Rahu or Ketu. I have also written a detailed explanation about Rahu and Ketu in my book Jodhidam Ennum Deva Ragasiyam. The articles in my book have more detailed explanations about Rahu and Ketu. Well, I have explained now how to make predictions based on the star lord of a planet. In part 2 of this video, we will continue the effects of the other planets in the house of Gemini. The link of Aditya Guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video that is accessible by both iOS and Android users. The link of the Google app is also given in the description box that is available for only Android users. The Tamil version of this video is also available. Please check the description box. Thank you.